What's going on guys? Welcome back. We're doing more of Gear Masters and we're going to get into the warnings base player Ale. We're going to see what she's got going on, what her gear looks like, the strings she uses, all this other happy horse shit. So I'm kind of curious because we did Danny. We did how Danny's smaller. So I called that she's going to have thinner strings. Ale's not. She's a little taller and with she's probably got longer fingers and all that so i'm kind of curious where she's at in that regard um but i don't know we're just gonna get into it man i hope you guys enjoy as always if you do let's get into it and uh make sure you guys check out more let me know in the comments what other videos like this you want to do we're gonna do at least once like one a week where it's not a music reaction it's like a gear or behind the, the scenes thing or whatever so make sure you check that out but as always comment check out all the stuff down below the merch store we're starting this is unrelated but we're starting a football podcast so if you guys want to check that out i'll leave the link down there for that and uh let's get into it man let's see what we got let's see what kind of base shit she got all right let's see what we got Hi, my name is Alejandra Villarreal and I am the bass player of the band The Warning. Um, our new single, More, just came out, so go check it out. And I am going to be talking about my bass today. This is my bass. This is a custom USA bass. Spectre. It's an NS5XL. I am a Spectre artist. I designed That's this pretty. bass with them. Everything from the wood and the, um, the material, the color, everything, every step. We did it together to the inlays, which is the, um, this is our logo. So okay, so A, she plays a five string. I love that. B, I didn't realize she already had a signature with Spectre. That's kind of cool. That's actually really cool. For you get to get a, a deal with a company is a very cool thing. Like, I wish I could design my own guitar with. It would probably be Ibanez, I'm going to be honest with you, but I would love to do that. That'd be sick. Oh, everything, everything we did together, and I really love it. Um, we did special wood in the back. It's, I think it's red wood to make the bass lighter because most of their bases are extremely heavy. Yeah, that's true. And, and so I just wanted to make it a bit lighter, but it's still, it's still great wood for the sound of the bass, and I feel like it's just perfect for everything we do with the band. So, so yes, I love it. I started using a five-string bass like maybe three years ago now, four years, and I quite love it. A fan actually gifted me a Spectre bass, a four-string oh, Spectre sick. bass, um, like five years ago maybe. And since then, I've loved Spectre, and and I'm really proud to now own a custom bass. You can actually get this design, which is called Alice Inferno, in the Spectre website, and I also Alice Inferno. We just released a dude if you got a fucking bass guitar or whatever named your name inferno like dante's inferno that's poof that's that's sleek that's kind of sick in the spectra website and i also we just released a signature model which is my model it's a four string bass and it was inspired by this original bass that we designed with spectre so so yeah it also has my signature in the back which is awesome i love it how and is everybody have such a sick added. signature like my signature is stupid how how is it that all these famous people do they go to like a, an artist and be like design me a six is these like god to this base our lights <laughs> okay so, so the same is, thing as danny they got the cool, but she's got the leds really running helpful. through i really want to know how they do it. I don't know if they just Dremel a channel down the side here. That's probably what they do is they have like, they take a small Dremel and just make a, uh, like a, a, a cutout for the, the LED to come through and it probably goes all the way down the neck and then down and in and over to the switch. 
That's just cool. That's a really kind of sick idea. I would do that not for, I don't even play in the dark, but I would do that just because it's a cool little thing. You know, the lights are all over the place. It's just so I can go back and I know where I'm playing, so. I might do that with one of my shittier guitars that I don't care about if I fuck it up. Two normal knobs and a stack. I think knob, that's how they're called. Um, <laughs> yeah. And this is regular volume. Yeah. This is Tone. the blend for the pickups. This side is mostly this pickup. I use that in the middle. Yeah. And these are the basic EQ. These are the high ends. I use it almost all the way up. Not, not all the way up though. I use it in standard tuning. So it's B, E, A, D, G. I standard tuning all the way. The strings I use. The Dario strings, I use the... I'm curious if they keep that standard tuning live. It seems like they do. They all say they do. But live, it sounds just beefier. Like, I swear to God, they drop it a half. Live. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just the way it's coming through. But it just sounds like they drop it a half down just to give it a little more meat. I don't know. I'm probably wrong there because it seems like they just keep it standard, but damn. NYXL 45 to 130, and I still light. I love them. They Very light, good. actually, for a bass. Uh, they last a really long time, and they're not too bright. They're not too flat, I guess. But yeah, I love these strings. I don't have to change them out as often. This is my pedal board. Um, I don't use that many pedals, but this you're better is off. A preamp. I love this preamp so much. I actually used it. It was one of the first pedals I got, I ever got. And then I stopped using it. And then I was like, I miss this pedal. And it's such a good uh, preamp. Really, this is how I control most of the sound that goes out when we play live. I really like the bass. To really cut through, since we're a, a trio. Um, yeah, I was going to say that. Her, her tone needs to really push through to give because they're a three piece you don't have a rhythm guitar player but you do with Danny but she's doing lead in rhythm so you don't have constant rhythm so she is constant rhythm so it's got to really punch through the the sound and be there it can't be hidden behind anything so that's that's cool she does it really well too like a lot of their songs are structured so she has space to breathe and like push through and it's really like I forget which song it was, but one of them, I was like, God damn, you can hear that bass through it, which is good. Like, that's a really good thing because bass, bass players are too often forgotten about because their sound just gets hidden, you know? Damn. Like the bass is really important, so we really want to have a bottom end, but this also really helps us um, define well what I'm playing because sometimes you really can't hear what the bass is playing. You can only feel it. I mostly only use True. the Engage. I don't use the AGS, um, but... This is the game volume. I, it's not the volume of the game. Um, and I really just use it up half, treble, half. Everything is mostly Dead center. in the half position. Um, bass, not too much, not too little. Mid frequencies. So mid she's levels, literally using it as just, just a booster, essentially. Head. She's not adding anything to it. She's just giving everything a push with that preamp. And my bass, it's really easy to be able to, you can, to be able to hear what I'm playing correctly without losing that bottom end so i feel like that's really important to me and this really helps me do that <clears throat> as well as this other pedal which is the dark glass microtubes i love this bass overdrive it's so good i've also tried a lot of overdrives over the past few years and this one is really cool because it's really easy to blend the the overdrive like the distortion sound mm -hmm. as much as you can or as little as you want it to so it's not really overpowering she's doing the hand thing. if you watch the pal video i kind of gave her a little bit of a hard time because my cousins do it they're at that they're at literally the exact same age they're like 19 to 22 and whenever they talk and they're like deep in conversation they do a lot of like this thing so it's just funny. It's a fucking generational thing. I'm sure I do quirky shit that the older people are like, what are you doing? And you can still hear what I'm playing. Like, as I said, like you can hear the bass lines without becoming just like this mess of like distortion. This is the which with bass, you don't want to add too much. It gets very, very muddy. If you give a bass too much distortion, it gets like you can't tell what the hell is going on. It gets super sloppy. I usually leave it all the way up and I mix as much of it as I want. And here, this is a blend between your normal bass sound and 
the distortion, I usually keep it almost halfway there as everything. <laughs> so yeah, here you just blend it as much as you want and it's really nice because you can still hear the original sound of the bass. That's such a good thing to learn how to do. It, so. That's such a good thing to learn how to do is to not overdo it. When you, I'm telling you right now, when you first get an electric guitar, you crank the fuck out of the overdrive and everything. And when you're playing, you think it's good, but I'm sure your parents want to kill you. So learning to dial it back is something that comes with time. You got to learn to like chill because the most distortion possible isn't always the best choice. It's amazing. I quite love it. This is my lovely tuner. You can't have yeah. a pedal board without a tuner. It's really important to me and it also serves as a new button. It's just muted. And it's really nice as well because even while I'm playing, I can see the tuner move around. So if I'm ever like mid song and I have no idea if I'm tuned well, I can play a note and it'll tell me if yeah, I'm tuned a bit or not. So yeah, it's just my tuner. This is the switch between my wireless so I can use it. Normally this is. Those have gotten so much better over the years. At the bottom. So it's packed in here. That's a sick board. So yeah, this is just to activate and deactivate the wireless pack. So yeah, this is what I use for live shows. I don't have this actually at home. But Mesa Boogie. Live shows. This is an Ampic cab. This is an eight by 10. And it's just that classic Ampic sound, which I love. And this is a Mesa amp. Um, it is mic'd and all, but we mostly use this for on stage and for like the people in front, so you can really feel the bass. Yeah, it gives you that rocky. I love this. It's honestly such a help when when we're on stage because sometimes you can't really feel the energy that the crowd feels. Like you, you can't feel it on stage, and the amps like really help us. Yeah, they rock to the floor the a little more. So mostly, I just love it to have like a lot of bottom end so I can feel and listen my bass on the outside as well. So That's thank cool. you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out our new music and go to thewarningbank.com for any other information you want to know about us. And yeah, thank you. That's cool, man. That's cool. Alright. So that was cool because you can kind of tell that uh she's younger like she's a little more subdued a little more like to herself a little more nervous i would say behind the camera but she did a great job she explained everything really well i understood what she was saying you know um but everything makes sense man she's she's using lighter strings she's using a preamp and all that stuff just to push her sound she's not really dialing up the distortion which is a good thing because you don't want your bass to get muddy at all that gets really fucking like, unless you're a fantastical bass player, if you have that turned up, it gets ridiculously muddy. So that's all good. The the boogie amp, the everything makes sense. She's doing good. I didn't know she had a signature bass, though. That's really cool. Like, if I had just free money to spare, which, of course, I fucking don't, I would uh, I'd just buy it as a wall piece because that thing is beautiful. Like, it's gorgeous, man. But that's going to be it for this one. If you guys enjoyed all three videos, make sure you like, subscribe, check out the rest of them if you didn't yet. And let me know in the comments what we need to be doing next. I want to keep doing these extra, you know, behind the scenes and gear rundowns and all this other stuff. So maybe we'll do one a week. Let me know what to do next because now we're done with these three. So we'll see where we're at, man. And as always, if you guys enjoyed like, subscribe, check out the Patreon and the merch store, and go check out the football podcast. Everything is linked down below. And that's going to be it, baby. So I'll catch you in the next one. I hope you enjoyed. As always, stay happy, stay healthy. Later.